Alright guys, not to back again today, hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and a very interesting piece of content came out from the CDL yesterday interviewing Envoy and Dashi talking about their run on Optic Chicago so far this season, the past of Optic, the present of Optic and the future of Optic as well and their thoughts on well the pressure that they encounter on a daily basis when playing for the Optic fan base, but also how the other teams perceive them as an organisation. If you your thoughts in the comment section below, like if you guys enjoy the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I greatly appreciate it, I really have to have the channel, thank you very much indeed for doing that. Speaking of Optic, thought this is kind of funny from back in 2016 this is. Crimsix and Karma suspended for one CWL League match for disruptive behaviour and insults towards league officials back in 2016. I actually forgot about this but I'm pretty sure when this happens was that they were playing up against 100 Thieves. Now 100 Thieves at the time is a team that certainly Nature does not want to remember in 100 Thieves folklore. It was their first uh, kind of entrance into well really esports in general and it did not go well for them. They had aches on the team, they had some other players on the team, they picked up some guys from this King Pappy squad that defeated Team Calibre at the qualifiers and that even like Team Calibre had Embo subbing in for them because Gunja couldn't make it due to visa restrictions. I'm pretty sure I made a three minutes in Cod History video about it last year sometime. But they played 100 Thieves in a match and of course playing up against Aix it's always going to be a bit of a funny time and Aix knew well for well that they were not going to be optic like head to head so they decided to do some dodgy things in the banner protect and like ban like um, yeah banner protect if you guys don't remember teams got to like every single player on the team got to either ban or protect one item and um, it got kind of crazy like, I'm not sure it was the greatest idea looking back on it, but it did mean that you could ban out all the best weapons, and there was a, basically like people were pulling out SMGs, or pulling out shotguns, sorry. Optic already frustrated about 100 of these pulling out shotguns, I'm pretty sure it was Royalty using the Argus to great effect. I think uh, Optic still ended up winning the series like game 5 round 11 or something, but um, they were not very happy about it. Clearly, uh, well, having some words with the referees and all that type of stuff, and ended up getting themselves a one match suspension, which is pretty funny to look back on to be honest. Speaking of Crim6, I did mention this yesterday briefly when we looked at those cards, but the the opening jewel rate for Crimson 33 and 8 is absolutely ridiculous. Big reason why Empire had the overall highest first blood rate in the entire league for this stage. And especially like impressive right about this from Crim is the fact that like they played 19 times during stage 4, including 4 versus phase and 5v ultra, right? So pretty incredible that uh, Crimson can keep up that level of first blood output. And you can see right here on this standoff session destroy where Crim is 10 in 9, but he has 5 first bloods and only 1 first death. So that's um, pretty impressive to be honest from Crim6 if he can keep that up, which is going to be hard to do. But that's well, something that's going to help Dallas Empire, no doubt, going into this upcoming stage. Speaking of on the S&D side, we did talk about earlier today some of the role changes that are going on and who really knows what's happening with Scraps, for example, over at the Paris Legion, but statistically in Search and Destroy, he was particularly good this past stage of 1.29, number 5, rated right here, like these little dashboards that are, well, round 11 stats has come out with. So this is what Envoy says a couple of days ago now, grind got harder and my mind got sparked. When he talks about in this video, right, that um, yeah, he wants to be known as one of the smartest SMG players, to be the smartest player, really one of the the smartest players to have ever well, played Call of Duty and won a lot of championships and of course that is the goal and him and Dashi have some very interesting things to say about what it's like to compete for Optic Gaming because of course it's Optic Chicago right now and um, it, it's tough right because it's not like they've had the craziest results so far this season in terms of where they want to be and the last season the world's, and last season as well on the Huntsman they won a fair few things and last season as well on the Huntsman, they won a couple of things, but um, of course a lot of those events they won didn't have like all the teams there, so it's still a little bit of a question mark whether those events should be counted or not. It's um, well, uh, certainly a discussion we had last season a fair bit, and uh, this season I guess it's continued at least to some degree, with now the majors being a lot more serious, right? Especially now we are back to land for the future at the very least. But it's tough right playing for Optic, because not only is the pressure there immensely from the fan base all the time, and it's honestly mounting continuously. That's the thing with Optic, right, is that like they've, um, they've had so much success over so many years, that and now, of course, you don't win for a few events in you know, quite a while, to be honest, as it has been for the Optic uh, well, organization and the Optic branding. And um, you know, the pressure is starting to mount to potentially some sort of breaking point. Who really knows? And then at the same time, you're looking at it from the other perspective is that, OK, well, what about the organizations? How do they perceive Optic? And uh, how do they, you know, how serious do they take those matches? Which is maybe more serious than they take it against any other team against maybe like the, the really top dogs. But I think that Optic is still considered, even though they might not be the scariest team in the world anymore, they're um, still considered when you play against them as a, well I think teams like take it super serious because you don't want to lose to Optic and that's always kind of the team to beat in terms of branding and stuff like this so that's kind of what those guys are talking about in the second we'll look at right here thought this is kind of crazy right because when Dashi initially joined Optic this is back in 2018 now where he won the uh, well they won the MVP at CWL Vegas this is his incredible stat this is what the lineback cards looked at at the time he made here back in 2019 but a respawn KT of almost 1.4 a search KT of like 2.2 at the event Dashi was ridiculous like came on the scene and immediately just started dominating with Optic 
onto gaming. And uh, well, since then, things went somewhat downhill. Then he was on Optic Gaming Los Angeles last year. Now back on the Optic Gaming and well, Optic Chicago brand. And well, this is uh, kind of what Envoy and uh, well, Dashi have to say about it yesterday. Talking about, look, there's a bounty on our heads at all times as a world well, players for Optic Chicago, but also that they're always the team that other organizations want to beat when they play them in matches. Playing for Optic, I mean, I played on different organizations. It's not the same at all. It's just like a different level of expectations. I had to take it in strides at first. You know, you had to get used to everything, but I don't think the pressure gets to me at all. You know, I think I perform under that pressure even more. Obviously, the pressure from the fan base, just everyone's watching or wants you to win. And when you lose, and you obviously hear that as well. If you're an Optic fan, you've got to be rejoicing. Obviously, we have a really vocal fan base. They just obviously voice their pains a lot, especially on social media and stuff. But I just try to tune it out, especially if it's like negative. I just really just tune it out. I think we're all really resilient when it comes to that, and we don't let that get to us at all. But I wouldn't see that say that's the biggest thing. I think the biggest thing is that everyone is out to get us. We're the biggest team in the CDL, um, not the winningest, but you know, the biggest team and everyone wants to beat us. There's like a bounty on our heads at all times. So one of the concepts and the kind of things they were discussing in this video was the idea that they're currently living in the shadow of a dynasty, which is, um, I suppose, true to some degree, or at least the hangover from it is maybe affecting them, because this is my perspective. If you're an Optic fan that's been around for several years, and I'm sure a lot of Optic fans are really new to the scene and don't really know too much about the dynasty, but this is the um, well, this is the, the era of dominance that they had. Now, Complexity were a more dominant dynasty within the, the two years that they were really present. For Black Ops 2, to Ghosts, they, I mean, I'm pretty sure they made the finals in like 13 events in a row and won like 12 of them or something just ridiculous like that. But um, look, the Optic Dynasty went on for much longer and they had a few hiccups here or there. But uh, still, this is a, honestly an incredibly impressive team. I think probably the best dynasty in COD history, even though the Complexity one was more dominant for the era that they were present. But you can see, look, Advanced Warfare, they won basically everything apart from towards the end of the title where they fell off a little bit to FaZe. They lost a fair few series to them, but you know, Scump Formal Crimson's Karma is the team if you guys aren't aware. Then through Black Ops 3 won pretty much most of the events, but fell short of the World Championship in both seasons, of course. I mean, the only result they didn't have that was great in Advanced Warfare was seventh at Champs before Nadeshot then retired and went a different way. And then in Infinite Warfare, they finally got over the line, right? So this is the era of dominance that Optic Gaming had. If you were an Optic fan, you went to an event in like, you know, pretty confident that your team would either win or at the very least make the Grand Finals. That's not the case anymore. And that means that the the pressure is mounting, right? Especially for Scump and Formal and those guys who are now part of Optic Chicago, they were also part of the dynasty in somewhat of an interesting spot. Because obviously nowadays it's so much harder to win. I've always talked about it in the video as well. The fact that like there's so many other great teams nowadays, the skill, like I guess the, the average skill of players in the league is so much higher than it used to be. Therefore, it's so difficult to replicate something like this. But well, they still have that kind of hangover in a sense from um, not only the individuals that like the fans want this like type of success to repeat itself, whereas back in like the you know, back in way back in the day, like 2012, 2012. 2013, when it was always Optic falling short to complexity, they were the underdog. They were the plucky underdog that's going to try and win an event here or there. Now, for Optic fans, it's not like that anymore because they've had all this experience of winning all these events over 70 years. I thought this is kind of funny. I found from Dashi from 2017 before he joined Optic saying Optic fans in Twitch chats are wild. That is certainly true and right, and Dashi's probably experiencing that on the other end of things right now. At the same time, right, you've got all these teams that are, well, that want Optic's neck in a sense when they go to play them. This right here, you can see the group selection, and um, I think we see this very often indeed. When Optic, despite not having the greatest results, I suppose, when you look at it so far this season, they always get a lot of respect from the teams in the league. They're always one of the very first teams to be picked and thrown into the other group. You can see Dallas Empire picks Optic to go into the other group over subliners that I suppose they could have picked to go over there. So, and of course, you know, when you're playing Optic, it's a massive match, right? Because you know all the viewers are there, you know all the pressure's on. So even if um, the team isn't quite as good as Atlanta Faze are this season, for example, there's still a lot of pressure on from the individual players, I'm sure, when the other team is playing Optic to show up and play their best Call of Duty on that day. So for a couple of different reasons, it's got to be hard playing for the Optic guys. But maybe they can harness all of that energy and turn it into some sort of result in the last couple of events of the season now. Stage 5 major champs, that is it. And then we are done for the season and done with Black Ops card war, I imagine. It's so crazy how quickly things go past, to be honest. This comes out from Optic as well. So speaking of the Optic guys, I thought this is kind of funny. They've got this theatre room going on. Scumby can see he's got the controller in hand right here, playing Warzone on this massive monitor. I don't understand, basically in the cinema, I don't understand what the input delay would be on this, because if you guys have played, um, well, I used to play, like, COD back on, the, on like, a 40-inch TV or whatever. I don't really know, like, the concept of input delay. I didn't really realize why it was so bad. But, like, on some of these big monitors, like, the input delay is so massive that I just can't control my character at all. I wonder what it would be on a cinema screen. It must be awful, unless they've got something that designed for it. Maybe Scum is, like, way, well, of course, Scum's way better than me. So he can probably deal with it way better than I could back in the day. But, again, yeah, I don't know how many kills he's dropping on this massive cinema screen. But pretty cool to see, regardless, from the Optic guys. This came out yesterday. I thought it was pretty entertaining from Lion Man. So he releases that, well, the stage four cards for the winners, that big Atlanta face. And I'll see if he wasn't too happy about it as well. Look, 
second and a second. So these are the ratings. And I'm pretty sure Easy Mac does all the stats and the ratings and the line man pieces them together for the cards. So Easy Mac, of course, is FaZe's analyst. So maybe RST is going to have a few words as we'll look at right here. So of course they won the thing. They came 8-8. I just love how beautiful these are. The MVP goes to Selly right here. 96 overall. This guy was out of control. I mean, Sim right up there as well. A PC right up there as well. And RST just kind of doing his thing. Overall 78. We talked about yesterday the fact that that's uh, relative to other like um, players in his position. But of course, like um, the thing is with FaZe is that their SMGs and their, well, their flex and Selim are so much better than average that RC doesn't really have to do anything statistically. But uh, maybe he could be boosted or whatever. I think he gets like, they get, yeah, they get like plus eight overall like points or something based on it because they won the entire thing. So something along those lines. But uh, well, we saw this actually reply. So, you know, RC comes out with this. IMO FaZe should be looking for a painting other than it's at least 80 overall, says Brian Sato over at the Minnesota of Rocking Air. RC has got to go. This guy's straight up not good enough. And as RC says, Easy Mac hasn't been in the team speak for days. And I see the light of that cards drop and it explains. I straight up just ban this guy. I've had enough at this point, says RC. And just to finish off with this from our well, TJ Halley, because of course, now down there in the challenger side. And well, to be fair, in this clip right here with the Kriggan ads, he was actually frying a fair bit. We talked earlier today about it. It seems like somewhat of a challenge for these uh, well, organizations and well, these individuals, let's say, to put eights together in not only the pro side, but also the challenger side. But it seems like they managed to do it right here. And TJ Halley doing it all with every single weapon here on the checkmate harper but it's really your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it i'd greatly appreciate a like on the video it really helps out the youtube because like you enjoyed this content other people like you may enjoy this content as well and i've grown the competitive call of duty community thank you as always take care and i will see you next time there's stairs in me, there's stairs. Oh, one more. Drop. Oh my yeah. One more P5. P5. Nice. Play in, play in, play in. Oh, no. one shot, top, top lane. Nice. Dead. Nice. Dead. I'm in front of I'm in front of the 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 I'